Welcome back to this sub-series on six times that Jesus said, you've heard that it was said in the law, but I tell you the truth. And we're looking at the second of those in Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 to 30. You've heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. Like most sins, lust longs for personal gain. Here Jesus reveals the potential losses. The temptation of any kind of sin is all about what we can get out of it. Uh, even if we're trying to avoid something, we're trying to avoid pain or hardship or, or visibility, we're still trying to gain safety or our own security or our own uh, control over our time and our life. It's always about what we want to get out of it. But Jesus reminds us that there's a cost to every decision, especially decisions to give in to sinful temptation. And he's talking about not just uh, temporal decisions of um, uh, tearing out your eye or your hand, which of course is hyperbole, but it, eternal consequences of hell itself. Uh, there are many times when I have been to a gym and I'm working out and there are uh, women around me in, in tight fitting and revealing clothing and I don't tear out my eyes but I do take off my glasses uh, and I do bow my head and do turn my head because I don't need to gain uh, that brief glimpse with the long-term damage that it causes to my own soul and in uh, other ways that I think about women. Uh, it's far more important that we gain personal peace and confidence in our relationship with God and others the way he wants us to than the long-term losses of hell itself. And he does so in a way that acknowledges the potential need to suffer now. As I just implied in my previous example, being obedient to the Lord and living the life that he calls us to might mean that this life is hard from moment to moment. Doing the right thing is not always the easy thing. That doesn't mean that the right thing is always hard uh, and that the uh, right way uh, doesn't have uh, immediate blessings sometimes, but not always. Sometimes those blessings come later as we develop more self-control, as we build long-term relationships, as we grow in other aspects of our character. Some of those things are slow to develop, but the uh, suffering can be immediate sometimes. Uh, not wanting uh, or not demanding that second or third donut, not going to sleep uh, knowing that we need to spend time with our spouse or spending time on video games knowing we need to spend time with our children or anything else. There might be some immediate difficulty in our life in order to do what is right in the Lord's eyes and for other people. But he does not appeal to greater gains as a motivation. If we always do the right thing because we will get something out of it in the moment, it may be that we are simply being self-indulgent in ways that look religious. True love is acting for somebody else's good even when it costs us something. And that's why they call uh, people fair-weather friends when they only act like friends when it's pleasant, when it's easy, when they get something out of it too. We, when they can enjoy their moment in the sun with you. True love is sacrificial. And so the Lord doesn't appeal here to what they can gain, but what they can lose. And like his warning for hate, he warns of the reality of a physical, eternal hell. This is important because there's a lot of bad, unbiblical theology out there that hell is not a real place. Or if it is a real place, it's a temporary place. That When he comes back, then he'll do away with hell. That's not what the Lord Jesus teaches. And it's important not that you take my word for it, but that you get into God's word and see what Jesus himself says. See what the prophets say. See what God's word cover to cover teaches about truth, not just in our relationships now, but in eternity. Because this life is a drop in the bucket. Eternity is forever. A little scary, uh, but the Lord is getting serious here because he's talking 
uh, to his disciples about people that believe that they are religious and that their religion makes them right with God. And he says it's not about outward action. It's about inward reality that results in outward action. Outward action can be faked for many different reasons of personal gain or, or personal safety. Hope that makes sense. Hope you'll join us next time as we continue to look at this sub-series of Jesus' statements. You've heard that it was said, but I say to you, hope you join us then.